Hi, Anti Society. Welcome back to the Anti Social Planet. And today we are watching episodes 192 and 193 of Bleach. So I'm still a little bit overwhelmed with the whole Nell used to be in a spada thing. Nell is definitely one of those characters since the first time seeing her that has just been something that doesn't make sense in the way that I understand the world. So getting some actual backstory and seeing that she does have a connection with Las Noches and not just that, but also like the Espada themselves is like exciting, but also brings up a lot more questions of what exactly was going on there because i've been saying since the beginning that i'm like Nell doesn't make any sense she's like this very humanoid looking arankar which usually means that they're powerful but she's not in las noches and i was like so like is she connected somehow is she just like a fluke that she was really strong but like didn't make it in that doesn't seem like something that would happen aizen seems like the kind of person that wouldn't miss that but then we were encountering some of the espada and they didn't seem to have any reaction to her so i was like maybe it's just a weird thing that happened like maybe she's one of the like arankar that just kind of spontaneously happens and has nothing to do with aizen making them so she just happens to be hanging out outside of Las Noches, and then we finally had one of the Espada, Teeth Espada, who's currently throwing Ichigo around, acknowledge that he knew who Nell was and that she is a former Espada, which you guys told me during the live is different from like a fallen Espada, which we've seen before. So like the fallen ones are the ones that get like the three digits that we saw before, but then this is like something else. It's kind of like Grimjo, I'm assuming. That's kind of how you guys described it to me. So when Grimjo lost his number, they like burned it off or whatever. And then he like didn't have another number. He just wasn't part of the ranks anymore. So I'm assuming it's something like that. Excited to kind of see where that leads us. Like, are we going to get some backstory on Nell? Are we going to see some more of Nell's power set because we've seen a little bit of it but not really uh we keep cutting back to her two like Arankar family members Peche and the one with the really long man- name that I can never remember but the one that's been with Renji this whole time we keep cutting back to them and them kind of being like very nervous about the idea that Nell is by herself which like to start, I was like, okay, they're nervous that she's by herself because, like, they're family and she's, like, off on her own. But they're, like, it, it's kind of shifted where it's, like, it's not that we don't think she's safe. It's that they can sense that she's around really powerful people. And they're, like, it's important that she doesn't get any deeper into Las Noches. Which, like, if that has something to do with the fact that she used to be in Espada, like, is... is their nervousness because of her power because i'm assuming she has a lot of it if she counted as an espada i don't know if she has a like a decent amount of power compared to the current espada because she isn't one of them anymore so she might have gotten kicked out because she wasn't powerful enough anymore or like there's something else to that story of like why she isn't in the ranks anymore i don't know so (laughs) let's just get into episode 192 and see how this is gonna turn out (laughs) in three two one go forgot to move my mic slightly out of the way because subtitles (laughs) I don't know. Do I need my Totoro? I feel like I should... There's gonna be a fight of some kind, right? Like... If nothing else. I'm so worried about Ichigo, because he's just... Like, not... Ready... To be fighting another Espada. Like, he just isn't. So... I feel like... It will not end well for him if there isn't some kind of 
intervention. I do like the artwork in the opener that's like the the drawings, like it looks like the drawings, that's cool. It's almost like the unfinished animation. Okay, here we go. Noitoro. Noitara. I'll have to remember that. Yeah, Ichigo is not doing well. Oof. Oh, poor little thing. There's gonna be some drama with that too, that Nell just like didn't mention that she used to be an Espada. <laughs> oh yeah. And then there's this guy. Fighting some clothes, but mostly he just makes me uncomfortable. See this part where it's like we need to find Nell. Like it's just it seems more desperate than like just I'm worried about whether or not she's safe. He likes to stir stuff up, doesn't he? Noitara? He's got some snake energy. I mean, I didn't think she was harmless. I've always kind of been on the fence about what whether Nell was like really powerful or not. A fight? Do they have a history of confrontation?
Oh. <laughs> yes. The spit and mucus. <laughs> <laughs> I do like babysitter Ichigo. Does she just not remember then? Like, did something happen? To get rid of that memory? He's still gonna, like, help her, though. There's no way he's just gonna, like, stand there and let this happen. Yeah. I don't think that uh, Noi Tara would just like make it up either. So I feel like it's just a matter of like her not remembering. Ugh. I don't feel good about it winning this fight, though. Someone's gonna have to come help him. Oof. Someone who's, like, not injured or on the edge of death. I'm just saying. Everyone's a little bit rough right now. Cause like Ichigo hasn't even tried to go like hollow form again. Like he's just running on empty at this point. Oh, he's the one who cracked her mask. Is that part of the reason she doesn't remember or that she left? Something to do with that confrontation? <gasps> Oof. The music is ominous too, which... <laughs> I mean, it adds to the atmosphere, but uh, does not calm my nerves. Oof. Oh. 
but he'll keep trying. Oof. He's persistent. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> I'll make him fight him, but like, Ichigo, you can't win. I've already had to see someone like literally kill you. And I'm just... We can't keep doing this, you know? Uh. It's almost like he's playing with them, too. Like, just smacking them around because he can. <gasps> See, like that, that's not necessary. That's just because he he wants to see Ichigo in pain. Come again? What does the pink cloud mean? Is that Nell's spirit pressure? Master Nell. Come again? Hello? <laughs> Uh, that's new. Is this like her true form? Ooh. Oh, dang. She looks so serious now. Ooh, confident, though. <gasps> no. <gasps> Wait. <gasps> oh, beat him up now. <laughs> Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. 
Oof. You deserve it. You deserve to have someone smack you around. Oh my god, my heart beats so high. <laughs> the adrenaline kicked in. So she's... She's three then. That's higher than Ulkeora. Oh my gosh. My brain is like fried right now. There's still like stuff happening, so I can't like fully process. <laughs> Probably about where Ichigo is right now too, so. She doesn't even look like she's trying. Oof. Ooh. I love that she just punched him. Like, has a weapon and was like, I'm gonna just punch him. That's new. Look at her! <laughs> I'm like oddly proud. <gasps> yeah, because she absorbs those, right? We've seen that. When she- she- her Kirby power. <laughs> oh, wow. Nope. Well, dang, girl. Look at you go. <laughs> Aww. She's still Nell, though. But, like, a lot bigger now, so. <laughs> yeah. A lot more strength now, so need to be a little careful. <laughs> I hope she doesn't headbutt him again, because that already caused him some problems. <laughs> uh. Oops. Not quite enough. It's looking a little rough now, though. See, that was my question, too. I'm like, 
Like, even though she's three, would she still be considered three now? Now that the power shifted around a little bit, like more powerful Espada have been created. Especially if she's one of the, like, earlier on Espada and Aizen keeps, like, perfecting how he makes them, that they'll get stronger and stronger, right? <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Wow. I thought, okay, so I legitimately thought that now might be like seven in the Espada because that's like the one that we haven't seen. Because we've seen 10, 9, 8, and 6, and then 5 and 4 because Ukeoda. We haven't seen seven. So I was like, I don't know, maybe she's seven. And that's, like, why we haven't seen them. But three. It's a lot higher than I thought. But again, like, how much does that count now? Like, is there a, is there a new number three Espada? And she just, like, still has the tattoo? Like, it just wasn't removed because she, like, I don't know, got kicked out or left or whatever. So I'm assuming she got replaced. It was amazing watching her fight though. Like she wasn't even trying <laughs> in that fight. Like she looks a little bit shaken that he's like still like um Nutra Nutra still around but like she barely tried before so i'm sure she's got some other stuff going on Ooh, are they finally gonna get out of that room that's like taking their their power and stuff <laughs> okay, so I feel like this is something that's going to take like a hot minute for my brain to fully <laughs> comprehend. <laughs> so, all right. Now, like I was saying at the beginning, always something where I was like, hey, how come she's not part of Las Noches or whatever? And then finding out that she's a former Espada, I was like, cool, like, all right, this is kind of mind blowing in and of itself. And like I was saying at the end there, like, I was expecting her to be number seven out of the Espada, like, former or whatever, because, like, that's the one we haven't seen. I guess she could be one of the other numbers if she got, like, replaced by somebody. But. I was like, well, we haven't seen number seven, and that's kind of weird. So, like, maybe she she was number seven and, like, hasn't been replaced or, like, that's just kind of how she fits in to this whole puzzle. Nope. She was number three, which is just... It was a lot more than I was expecting, okay? Out of the, like, scale of what I was, like, where Nell's power level was going to be, I was like, I think she's got some power behind her. Because the whole, like, look and human thing. We've seen her do some cool tricks, like, absorbing the Saro beam thing. So we've seen her do some cool, interesting things before, like, that normally we didn't see with Arankar or Espada and stuff. So I was like, I think she has power, but, like, not top three power. It's crazy. Like, she didn't even seem like she was putting in a bunch of effort to fight, um... Noitara. Noitara. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but you guys will forgive me. <laughs> you know, like, and she seemed a little bit shaken by the fact that, like, she, like, forced, like, reversed his power on him and he was still okay. And usually that's, like, you know, if you're, you're using your full strength and that comes back at you, that means that it's gonna, like, have, like, deal a lot of damage. So, 
a little bit shaken by that, but I feel like she definitely has a bunch of other tricks. Like, we haven't seen her really use her Zanpakuto. We haven't seen a, a released form. Oh my gosh, she is a released form, isn't she? This is very exciting for me. <laughs> I have to, like, completely reconfigure how I think of Nell. There's such a story there, too, of, like, why she got cut out, why she got in the fight with, um, Noitara. Noitara. And, like, what that conflict was and why it resulted in, like, her mask cracking and her getting kicked out of Las Noches and, like, why her memory was gone. And I think maybe it has something to do with the fact that her mask was cracked, that her memories were gone and she, like, lost her power for a little while. How did she meet the other Arankar that are, like, part of her family who seemed to know that, like, they called her, like, Master Nell... Nelian? I don't, I, can't, I don't remember what her full name is. Um, but, like, they referred to her as Master, which is, like, what the, like, Arankar that assist the Espada usually usually say for their, like, Master. So that, that, makes, that means that they're aware that she was an Espada, but it also makes me wonder if they were with her while she was, like, an Espada, like she was in Las Noches. I feel more confident about her being able to win against the Espada, though. But, I mean, like I was saying before, like, she was ranked number three. Does that qualify her to still be ranked number three? Like, if she was to become an Espada again, would she be number three still? Because if she's one of the earlier Espada, then she would have, like... Like, because the Espada get, like, replaced as more powerful Arankar are created. So as Aizen, like, perfects his ability to make them and, and is able to make them stronger then you know she probably like would she have been replaced as the third espada anyway just because she's like not as strong as some of the newer espada or does she still qualify in that like even top five spot i'm not sure but it looks like we are going to be going back to Renji and Ishida's fight, which I'm a little uncomfortable with because you guys know how I feel about that Espada. He's, he, make, he makes me all kinds of uncomfortable. So I don't know how I feel about that. They're still going to be fighting the clones. It looked like maybe from the preview they'll finally be able to break out of that room that's been like sapping their energy. So they might actually be able to like use... Like, you know, Ren Renji can use his Bankai, and Ishida will be able to use his, like, bow and arrow to more effect than he has up to this point. So it'll be a little bit more of a fair fight. I feel better about that. Like, I was nervous. I was like, I don't think they can win, but if they're able to fight both of them at, like, full strength again, with, like, some exceptions, because, of course, they're, like, tired and beat up and stuff. But if they can actually, like, get all of that, like spiritual pressure and stuff and be able to like fully use it then like i have a better feeling about them winning that fight so let's just watch episode 193 and see what cool fights we've got lined up in three two one go i don't even i don't even fully know what this is gonna be <laughs> I feel like we're going to leave the whole Nell thing for a little bit. Got to focus on some other stuff that's going on. I really want to know how Seto and Rukia are. Because we just left them for like a while. And I would like to know how they're doing. Does Nell... Okay, so Nell's powers, right? <laughs> so we have the healing spit. <laughs> Is that still a thing? Is it more powerful? Does she have, like, more healing capabilities? Speaking of people who could use some healing. I mean, probably not to the same extent of, like, Orihime, because Orihime isn't really just healing. She's, like, manipulating time. So it's different, 
but Do we have some another healer on the team? They gotta take her with them now, right? I was like, we can't leave Nell when we're done with the whole like Las Noches thing. They gotta take her with them. Ugh, I hated that. That he's just like enjoying causing him pain and like playing with him Nelia so that I was close I guess <laughs> Yep. I bet you and her Zampak toe is like that green color though. Green's my favorite color, so I might be biased. <laughs> Completely unfazed. I don't think Nell has a right to be this cool. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> After spending all this time of her being with this, like, tiny sidekick character who was, like, for comedic relief and, like, to be an external motivation for Ichigo to, like, win battles and stuff. And now she's just, like, cool. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with that information. Yes, we were fighting the clones. <laughs> Can't I, I don't know why they don't trade off though. Like Adenji fights the Ishida clones and Ishida fights the Adenji clones. You know what I mean? So that they're fighting against different abilities? Not just because I want to see what it would look like if Ishida and Enji fought each other. But I kind of want to see what that'd be like. <laughs> In a friendly way. Like, now it's like, you know, these dragon fodder clones, so it doesn't matter. I wouldn't want to see them actually fight each other. Uh oh, even when they get rid of them, they just come back. Hydra style. You need to attack the Espada. <laughs> but, like, if you get the Espada, then all the clones will go away. Right? Because he's the one creating them? Oh, no. <laughs> They're trying to help, though. They just aren't. Oop. 
<laughs> Poor Pesce. Isn't the difference the eyes? <laughs> Easy to <laughs> okay, but like attack the Espada though. It's the only way that we're gonna we're gonna win. Cause this is just wasting energy and time. Uh, Denji? Yes, work together. Denji with the ideas. Interesting. That didn't work out very well last time, but I assume you've got some idea. Oh dear. It's part of the plan, though. Oops. <laughs> That's one way to get out of the room. Just too much power in one spot. Could have given some warning, though. I agree. <laughs> so, it just goes back to what I was saying before. I'm like, Renji's, like, more tactful than he portrays himself. Like, he always seems like he goes for the, like, brute strength approach. And this kind of was. But he always has, like, He's always willing to kind of figure out his opponent's abilities and make a strategy around that. What are we doing now? With the giant wings.
Is it time to actually fight him? I don't know, it makes me even more uncomfortable. <laughs> oh no. This <laughs> is... Oops. Just a mess. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Time for the real fight. Ooh, one co left. Just... I'm gonna get Totoro because his powers always make me uncomfortable. They're gonna be able to like really fight back now though. What are those creatures? Were they part of the throne? That he had? Because it looks like the throne is gone. Um... What are we doing? Come again? It's almost like a voodoo doll, which creeps me out too. It is like a voodoo doll. Ow.
Um. <gasps> oh, I was worried that it would like break a spine or something. <gasps> oh no! Well, don't get caught too. So very uncomfortable about you talking about vulgarity. <laughs> and like the idea of him like like playing with their internal organs. Uh. Beat him up. <laughs> I have confidence in you. Ooh. Will he have a flashback of some kind? Ooh, is that what she looked like before? With the, like, white clothing that they all wear? Ooh, are we gonna get flashback next episode? Because that's exciting. I want to know Nell's story. Especially since, like, I have to reframe how I think about her. <laughs> I 
I feel like things are still just kind of like ramping up little by little. How's Grim Joe? Is he still just like on the ground somewhere where they left him? Going through a personal crisis? So it does look like we're going to get some flashback. Hello, Gein. Do we have to? It makes me very uncomfortable. It does fit with, like, the butterfly imagery, though. <laughs> very dramatic entrance. <laughs> you know it's bad when it, even Geed's like this makes me uncomfortable so I feel like a lot of that was I mean besides putting aside the whole like Dell thing for this because we didn't focus on that as much I felt like that was really just establishing some more of like the powers of the Espada and like what we were dealing with so I feel like it was a lot more like setup that we're gonna like get into a little bit more in the coming episodes like in terms of like Renji and Ishida's fight which I'm very worried about because of this whole voodoo doll thing that's going on on the one hand the fact that he's like literally making them into a toy is like incredibly symbolic and terrifying and I don't like the implications of that but on the other hand those little plushies were really cute and I kind of want one not in like a you know pop it open and play with somebody's internal organs way but like in a I just want a plushie of it. Those are probably a thing, aren't they? <laughs> and it's it also goes into like the whole like butterfly imagery that we've been seeing with a uh, pink haired guy. Um, <laughs> I'm too afraid to like try his name. We've seen a lot of the imagery with him in general, but like there's also um, kind of a cocoon thing that he's kind of making and there's the whole thing of like when caterpillars become butterflies they like liquefy and like rebuild themselves so like the fact that he has these clones that are like kind of made out of this like gel substance Ugh, he's just he's so creepy i just i haven't been this creeped out since we first met mayuri and I didn't someone I didn't think someone could compete with Mayuri. I don't know if he's creepier. I think this Espada makes me more uncomfortable because he seems to like actually enjoy the whole process of what he's doing. Whereas like Mayuri like seemed like more disconnected. Like he really couldn't connect with the feelings of the people he was dealing with. Whereas, like, this Espada, like, recognizes how he's making people feel, and he's just, like, relishing in that. And it just, it it's so much more uncomfortable. I mean, before I was like, I feel like Renji and Ishida can win against him. I don't know if that's the same now that, like, he can, like, crush their stomach from a distance. He's very much like a, he doesn't, like, actually physically fight people. Seems to be his style, like, between the clones and then controlling people with like the dolls he he doesn't seem to like want to like actually come into contact with people which i mean if he seems a little bit disgusted by people so like maybe that's part of that too so i'm hoping that they can do something really cool and win out i liked that renji was using his brain a little bit and got them out of that room that was like sapping all of their power 
clever move on him. I always knew he was smarter than he looked. And, you know, I hope that they can come up with something that, you know, brings them out on top and uh, they're able to beat this one. I'm really upset that it, they are struggling, like, two of them are struggling so much with the eighth, <laughs> like, Espada in the ranking. Like... Ichigo has been like out here dealing with like number six and number four all by himself. Well, I mean, some help from Nell now, but you know, he's out here trying to deal with all that by himself, and Ishida and Nenji can't take one together. It's very disheartening. And I'm very excited to get into Nell's backstory in the next episode. It looks like we're going to get some of like when she was actually in Espada because I want to know how she kind of worked into that dynamic, why she left or got kicked out, like what the story is there, and to kind of rebuild how I think of her in my brain because I feel like I'm just meeting her for the first time now, even though she's been around for a little bit. Like I feel like it's a new character that I have to try and understand. Excited to kind of see how, where her powers are too, if we're going to get that in the flashback or just during her fight. I don't know. I'm glad that we have somebody who is a little bit of a powerhouse though on our side. I'm glad that Nell is with Ichigo and friends. If you enjoyed this video, then you can click this playlist over here to go back to my previous reactions in this arc. I post new Bleach episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you don't want to miss that, you can subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!